Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Dine Video Blog, done in conjunction with Circle ID and ICANN Wiki. And I'm here with Michele from Black Knight. Um, tell us just briefly um, about Black Knight. Uh, Black Knight are a hosting company and registrar based in Ireland. And I'm the chair of the registrar stakeholder group within ICANN. Excellent. Um, and you participated in the Internet Governance Forum, correct? Can, yeah. There was a big panel there yesterday that were brought in a lot of people from different sectors of the ICANN community. So you had uh, ALAC, Civil Society, I think there were a couple of government reps um, and a few others. And it's, it's, you know, internet governance has become a big thing. Mm -hmm. and I suppose it was becoming more and more of a big thing anyway, but with the announcement around the IANA transition prior to the Singapore meeting, it's become really, really big. So, right. So yesterday's um, session, it was a little bit strange in that, you know, it was kind of the, the, the top level topic was something like, you know, looking towards the future. And I think, you know, they, they were meant to be talking about IGF, Net Mundial. Uh, I think people were more talking about just kind of internet governance in general. Um, but I mean, I think I said something along the lines of, look, you know, some of these people do it full time, the rest of us just want the internet to work. <laughs> That's great. Well, maybe you could um, help explain to our audience what this um, whole thing with the IANA transition is. I mean, a lot of, you know, I'm from the US, obviously, and a lot of really? our- Really? Yeah. <laughs> Never get us. I know, I know. I keep hearing from family and friends, you know, are we giving the internet away? What's going on? Can you explain what the issue is? Sure. I mean, the, this, there is a lot of, there's been a lot of really strange coverage in the media where it's like, oh my God, Obama's giving away the internet. And I'm kind of going, really? I didn't know he had it to begin with. And that's the <laughs> thing, is that ultimately, um, the way things work is that the IANA function, it's, it's basically a database. So in your case, you guys run several uh, TLDs, like .wiki and .inc. Mm -hmm. So .wiki and .inc, in order for those domains to work, they need to be in the, in the root. And part of the IANA function is deciding, well, controlling, let's just say, how um, top-level domains get into the root. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a technical function, right? It's totally technical. It's purely technical. Mm -hmm. It's administrative and technical. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing is that up until now, um, that management of the of IANA, which wasn't just, by the way, to do a top-level domain, so to do, also to do with uh, protocol parameters and a couple of other bits and bobs, mm -hmm. which are all really, really, really technical. Mm -hmm. And most people have no idea about this stuff because it just works. It happens in the background, the internet works, you're happy, right. I'm happy, and you know, stuff happens. So the US government's role um, was there and had been there since the get-go, pretty much. Um, and the US government said, okay, we want to transition out of this. We want to step back a little. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about this purely administrative, technical thing over in the corner. This is nothing to do with freedom of speech. This is nothing to do with net censorship. This is nothing to do really with websites or any of the other stuff that people have been talking about. That, I mean, that's what the media's been talking about, but that's not what this is about. What we're, what we're talking about here is, you know, should .cu, and this is an example I use all the time, should .cu resolve? .cu is the country code for, Columbia, for Cuba. Right. Now, you're American. You cannot travel easily to Cuba. I'm Irish, I can. <laughs> it's really nice, by the way. Um, and the cigars, brilliant. Love but, them. you know, the way the US government has been involved in this is that they're always taking a pretty light touch. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could have been heavy-handed. They could have shoved their noses in and said, no, 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 you know, .cu, CU won't, won't resolve. You know, we don't like dot something, it's not going to work. Right. But, what it's, but no, it's been more of a kind of hands-off, you know, has the process been fo followed for that domain to exist, that domain extension to exist, mm -hmm. you know, or, if, or to make a domain extension disappear, which has happened as well. So for right. example, dot YU was the country code for Yugoslavia. Okay. Yugoslavia is no more, so dot YU was taken off, off the internet. Got it. Um, in the, and as we have all the new TLDs going in, then that has to be controlled and managed. So the, the big thing has been around um, what they're calling the stewardship of the IANA function. Okay. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion, and there's going to be discussion at this meeting today particularly, around this transition. And it's, you know, for, for ICANN, this is a huge thing, mm -hmm. because it's um, finally moving from 
a situation where there's a special relationship with the U.S. government mm -hmm. to a special to a kind of relationship with the world, I suppose, to, to the ICANN community, the technical community. So mm -hmm. you've got people flying in from uh, a lot of from the. The, from Ripe, from Aaron, um, mm. you've got uh, a bunch of other organisations. I mean, these are all people dealing with the, the plumbing of the internet. You know, right. purely technical. Right. And it's as I say, it's not this kind of oh my god, we're giving away the internet because I'm sorry. And I know this really hurts you guys, but you're Americans. Yes, yeah. you have a lot of the internet because you know you're a big country and all that, but you don't control us. Well, we do live in a worldwide society, so. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, the rest yeah. of us use Celsius. You guys insist on Fahrenheit. <laughs> I use kilos. You use pounds. I mean, it's it's you know, it, in the real world, we use normal things. Yes. Well, I think it makes perfect sense that there's three feet to a yard and you sixteen do. ounces to a pound. This explains a lot. <laughs> anyway, um, so what what is happening or could happen at this meeting with regard to the IANA transition? Well, okay, it's an ICANN meeting. You know, mm -hmm. when somebody asks me, you know, what could happen, right? I, I feel like kind of breaking out, giggling. This is like, there's nothing's going to happen. We'll talk about something. People right. will stand up and they'll pontificate. Uh, I mean, don't worry, that probably includes me as well. But you know, it's not like we're going that anybody is going to make some big decision today or tomorrow. This okay. entire thing around the Iona transition. It's a process. It's the a lot of people within the community want to make sure that ICANN um, is accountable. Um, that this entire management of the IANA moving forward is done in an accountable and stable, uh, stable fashion. Right. I mean, for yourselves and for the rest of us, you know, we want stuff to work. Right. It needs to be stable. It needs to be secure. You can't have a situation where stuff doesn't work. Right. And that you know should be a primary concern but of course you're going to have people with you know interest kind of going oh you know the US is, is giving right. up control of the internet which they're not right. but the Tea Party has taken that in the states it's kind of going oh my god it's a way to attack right. Obama but I, I assume that um, it's would you agree that it's better that we end up in a like what what where would you like to see us a year from now with regards to the transition, if you could just wave a wet magic wand. If I could wave a wet magic wand, like lots of things I'd be worried about, uh -huh. IANA wouldn't be on the top of my list. But you know, if I if I was looking at IANA, um, you know, it's it's something which, you know, it should just work in right. the background. It's not something that we should all be focusing As huge amounts of effort on. I mean, I understand why there is this big thing around it because ultimately, in many respects, the since I can foundation it was kind of a build up towards that kind of transitioning out of the US government role right. so in a, in a future you'll end up where the US government will be like any other government that has a relationship with ICANN that has a relationship with the ICANN community right. it won't be the government that has a the special contract and the relationship etc 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 I mean the thing is this it's like if you look at the way Governments are interacting with with TLDs, with the domain name system. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the GAC, which is the the body where they all sit at ICANN, has become incredibly powerful and mm -hmm. has been putting a lot of pressure on um, on ICANN and on new TLD applicants such as yourselves or registrars such as us mm -hmm. to to make significant changes to how things are run. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be an interesting evolution to watch over time as well. Right. Like the IANA transition, however. You know, in many respects, it's quite boring. It has right. to be handled correctly. Don't get me wrong. Of course, it has to be handled correctly, right. but it's a very technical right. administrative function. It's not sexy. It's not super exciting. You know, domain extension exists. It's delegated to organisation A, and right. it works. Now, of course, there have been things around how. Um, country codes were delegated and redelegated. Mm -hmm. Now what that means there is that so for example, okay I gave the example of dot yu. Right. Dot yu, as there's no Yugoslavia, it was it ceased to exist. Right. But you've got some kind of odd little situations where dot su for example still still exists. Mm -hmm. Su is Soviet Union. Right. Now I know that for some people you know, the Soviet Union still exists, but you know, if they actually checked on a map, they'd realize, no, it hasn't existed for years. The, wall, the Berlin Wall's gone. You know, the two of us are old enough to remember when it existed, but you know, it's gone. 
but the extension is still there. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, there's kind of weird little things like that where you know, certain organizations have said to, to ICANN, hey, you know, we should be controlling that country code. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's a bit to be a process around who gets to decide. And there has been some interesting things there where there's been differences of opinion. Mm. Now, in the case of GTLDs, mm. it's much, much simpler. I mean, you have a very, very clearly defined set of rules and processes and everything else. You don't have to worry. Right. It'd be fun. Well, we've got the two-letter issues still, but... Which two issues are those? Um, the fact that you can't delegate the any two-letter, two-character SLD in any of the new GTLDs because of the possible overlap with the country codes. But um, yeah, I mean this this thing this thing around the two-letter thing. I mean, yes, a lot of the CCTLDs have had similar policies, mm-hmm. but over time they've they've kind of gone. Well, hold on a second. You know, this is this technically shouldn't be a big issue, right? So originally, what you were you had some of them had were policies saying, you know, you cannot have a domain at the second level that matches with the top level, right? But as the top level has expanded, right? then that became totally impractical because you're ending up in a situation where the top levels themselves are proper words. They're not right. they're not just a string of arbitrary characters. Right. I mean if you look at it realistically, you look at say, you know, I don't know, dot dot net. I mean sure. Right. We might understand it means network, but let's face it, it's three characters. It's not particularly meaningful. No. But now you're getting into a, into a, into a time where you do have meaningful top levels. Right. So, you know, dot wiki, which we like. I'm, just going, I'm going to plug your TLD <laughs> for you. So, you know, you've got dot .wiki, and what is a wiki? Yeah. And it's like, okay, so if I go to something dot .wiki, I'm probably going to find wiki-like content. Right. Whereas if I go to something dot .com, mm-hmm. I don't know, what am I going to get? It could be a blog, it could be a wiki, right. it could be it could be anything. And there's, com there's, is, is such a large percentage of the internet that it's generic. Oh, it's generic, um, but the same thing, though, if you look at a country code. If I yeah. go to a dot, uh, we're here in the UK, if I go to a dot co dot UK, I don't know what type of content I'm going to get. Right. It doesn't, it just gives me no indication apart from the general kind of, okay, it's probably UK related in right. some way. Uh, and it's the same with a lot of the other country codes. But what with the new TLDs, the a lot of them are semantically related to the type of content you would expect to see there. Yeah. Another example I've always, uh, I've always thought was really good was like blog. Yeah. Dot blog, you'd expect to see a blog. Right. But then anyway, I'm, I'm, I view these things very simplistically. True. Michele, thank you so much. No that problem. was a lovely explanation. And um, I look forward to seeing you in Los Angeles. Yes, I'll be there. Excellent.